boys and girls, welcome to our online Holiday Bible Club today. But before we go any further, we'll just all bow our heads and have a wee word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank and we praise you for every boy and girl that has joined us here um, with our Holiday Bible Club online. And Lord, we just pray that you will just continue to bless us. Help the boys and girls uh, just as they listen and learn from your word, the Bible, as we learn the memory verses and as we just listen to hear your word. Lord, we just pray that you will bless us, that we will learn many truths from your word. So continue to bless each and every boy and girl that has gathered with us today. In Jesus' name. you'd ever been in. There were a huge variety of plants, there were flowers to enjoy, there was a vast array of animals. Where was this place? It was a place called the Garden of Eden. Now much much bigger than any garden that you and I might have in our home. This was a vast place, a place full of God's wonderful creation. And the first two people that God created Adam and Eve, they were able to enjoy all of the wonders of the Garden of Eden. They enjoyed the birds and the trees and the animals. And best of all was the close friendship that they had with God himself. Every evening, God came and talked with Adam and with Eve. God said to Adam and Eve, you can eat the fruit from every tree in the garden except for one tree. One tree in the middle of the garden, a tree known as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You're not to eat the fruit from this tree. God said, if you eat the fruit from this tree, you will surely die. But God had an enemy. God's enemy is Satan or the devil. And Satan did not want Adam and Eve to obey God. And so Satan came up with a cunning plan using a snake, using a serpent. One day the serpent came to Eve. He craftily suggested to Eve, So God said that you're not allowed to eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden. But of course God hadn't said that. Satan was telling lies about God. Satan was twisting God's word. Do you know Satan still twists God's words today. 
Eve knew Satan was doing that. And she replied to him, No, we may eat of any of the fruit except from the tree in the middle of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If we eat that or touch it, God says that we will die. But the serpent, Satan, had an answer for Eve. Oh no, you won't die. God knows that if you eat that fruit, you will be like him. You will know good and evil. Satan was trying to make Eve believe that God was trying to cheat them out of something good. But God's instructions were good. He had made Adam and Eve and he knew what was best for them. Foolishly, Eve listened to the serpent's clever words. She looked longingly at the forbidden fruit on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She wanted it. She reached out. She took it and she ate from that fruit and she even gave it to her husband, Adam. Very sadly, Adam and Eve had listened to Satan, God's enemy. They had disobeyed God. Adam and Eve had sinned. You see, that's what sin is. Sin is disobeying God. Sin is going against God and his ways. And that's what the dark page or the black page of our wordless book teaches us about. It teaches us about sin. Sin is refusing to follow God's words. And do you know what is really sad? The day that Adam and Eve sinned, Sin just didn't become a problem for Adam and Eve, but sin became a problem for all of us. The Bible teaches that from the moment that Adam and Eve sinned, sin was then passed on to every single person that has ever been born since then. Think about it like this. Have you ever set up a game of dominoes? You set each domino up very, very carefully, quite close to each other. And once they're all set up carefully in a line, you just touch the first one. And as you touch the first domino, it hits the next one, it makes it fall, and the next one falls, and the next one falls. And so it goes on right to the end of the line. Adam and Eve, they fell into sin first. They were the first people to sin. And because they sinned, then their sin has been passed on to every person that has been born since then. The Bible says that we have all been born with sin in our hearts. I've been born with sin in my heart. You have been born with sin in your heart. In the Bible, in the book of Romans, we read a verse and it says this. It says that all have sinned. That means every single person. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter how clever you are. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what skin colour you have. The Bible says that everybody, that all have sinned. And you know, you can see those sinful ways. You can see the sin in the way that we think about things, in the way that we speak, in the way that we act. Whenever you disobey your parents, whenever you're selfish and just make a whole big fuss and a scene just to get your own way, that's how you see the sin that is in your heart. Whenever you tell lies to get out of trouble, whenever you take something that doesn't belong to you, whenever you cheat in a game just so you can become come first, that shows the sin that we've been born with in our hearts. We have all sinned. And Adam and Eve, back in the Garden of Eden, they knew that they had sinned. They felt guilty, that they felt shame. And when they looked and they saw they were naked, they quickly sewed some fig leaves together to try and make coverings for themselves. And that evening, when God came to talk with them, as he did every evening, for the first time, Adam and Eve tried to hide from God. They were afraid. They knew that they had disobeyed God. But of course, God knew where Adam and Eve were. He knew what they had done. And when God spoke to Adam about what he had done, Adam actually blamed Eve. 
the woman you gave me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate it. And then Eve blamed the serpent. The serpent tricked me and I ate it. Adam and Eve were beginning to see what an awful thing sin was. Sin brought guilt into their lives. Sin brought fear into their lives. Do you ever feel guilty when you've done something wrong? That's because deep down in your heart, you know that you have sinned. You know that you have disobeyed God. And to try and deal with those feelings of guilt and fear, Adam and Eve blamed each other. Can you think honestly of a time when you've blamed other people for wrong things that you've done? Maybe you've cried out and you said, it wasn't my fault, she started it, or he hit me first. You see, we don't want to own up for our own sin. We instead, we try to blame other people all around us. And just as God saw and knew all about Adam and Eve's sin, so God sees and knows all about our sin. Maybe you've taken something or cheated that doesn't belong to you, or maybe you've cheated a spelling test, and nobody else ever knows that you did it. But God does. God sees and knows everything. He knows all about the sin in your life. I wonder, can you think back to yesterday? Can you remember a special truth that we learnt about God when we thought about the goal page? Can you think really hard? Yes, well done. We learned that God is holy. And boys and girls, the Bible teaches that because God is holy, then that means that God must punish sin. And that's what happened in the Garden of Eden. God spoke first to the serpent, the creature that Satan had used. God said, you are cursed. From now on, you will crawl on your belly and eat dust. Then God spoke to Eve. You will have pain, especially when you're having children. Your husband will rule over you. Finally, God spoke to Adam. You're going to have to work very hard from now on as you care for the ground because now thorns and thistles will grow. And all these things were true. Pain and suffering came into the world. Suddenly there were weeds and thistles and thorns that started to grow. And since then, sin has spoiled the world and it spoiled all the people in it. But there was one more punishment for sin, the most serious punishment of all. Can you think back to a little bit earlier? What was it that God said would happen to Adam and Eve if they ate the fruit of that tree, that tree in the middle of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Do you remember what God said? God said, if you eat the fruit of that tree, you will surely die. That's right. And do you know that happened? God put Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. They no longer enjoyed a special friendship with God. And years later, they did die. Sin was so serious that it brought death into the world. But sin also brought another kind of death. A separation from God. The Bible teaches us that the payment for sin is death. This means an everlasting death. A death where you're not only separated from God forever, but that you will suffer a punishment for sin that will last forever. Sin is serious. Sin must be punished by a holy God and that punishment is everlasting death not to be with God in heaven but instead to be separated from God in a place that the Bible speaks about called hell do you know this black page of our book really is sad news but boys and girls there is hope do you remember yesterday when we thought about that goal page? The goal page reminding us of how that God is holy and how that God and his holiness loves us and has created us and wants us to be in his home heaven. You see, God doesn't want us to suffer everlasting punishment for our sin. 
That's why God has made a way, a way that so that you and I can have the punishment of our sin forgiven, taken away, so that we can go to heaven and be with God in his home and enjoy everlasting life there. And right away back in the Garden of Eden, right at the time of Adam and Eve, God gave us a clue. He gave us a special clue about his plan. The plan that God had to rescue you and I from the punishment of our sin. Can you remember what Adam and Eve tried to, to make and to sew together to make coverings for themselves? Yes, it was fig leaves. But later on, God had a better way. An animal was killed. And God used the skin of the animal to make clothes for Adam and Eve. And this was a sign. This was a special sign that God had made a way for Adam and Eve to have their sin forgiven. God also gave a promise that one day he would send someone to be a saviour. This person would die and because of their death, our sins could be forgiven. And we wouldn't have to pay for the punishment of our sins. This saviour would be the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you believe in him, when you believe in his death for you, then you can have your sins forgiven. You can enjoy everlasting life with God rather than everlasting death separated from God. and girls, whenever you find treasure, you normally take it and you put it into something where it will be safe and where you will it will not be lost. And we are learning some treasures. And the first that I want us to learn today and to take and to treasure is found in the Bible. In ba the Bible says, in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death, 
that everybody knows what wages are. Whenever you work, you get what you deserve at the end. You get your wages. And wages are the things that you deserve because of what you have done. So the Bible tells us what we deserve because we have done things that are wrong. The wages of sin is death. But, that's the wonderful thing. There's a but. But the gift of God. Now you know that a gift is something that someone else pays for. And they give to you even though you don't deserve it. And the Bible tells us in our verse, let us say together, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you get a gift and you open it up and you say, what is it? And whenever we find in this verse, it says eternal life. What is it? Is it just a life that goes on and 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 on forever? Or is it a life that is full of every good and perfect thing? A life that is rich and a life that is full and a life that is filled with joy. And a life that come, never comes to an end. And there's always more and richer and better. It's an amazing thing that God has given to us. Offered this gift of eternal life. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And then it tells us who it's from. Through the our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the gift of God is through and that reminds us that it was through what Jesus paid on the cross whenever he died he was dying so he could purchase for us the gift of eternal life so that instead of getting what we deserved, God could give to us something that we didn't deserve. So I want us to try to learn this verse and store it in our minds so it will be there for a hundred years. Do you think you can do that? Okay, let's say it together. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We realise that Jesus Christ, one of his titles is Lord, it means Master, the one that we submit to, the one that we obey, the one that we trust, and the one that we give our hearts and lives to and make him our Lord, the one that is first in our lives. So I'm going to say it again, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's found in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Okay, one more time. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's found in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Do you think that you can remember that? I know you can. Thanks, boys and girls. We have another treasure for you tomorrow. Okay. Okay, it is quiz time again. And... Uh, just want to remind you of the rules. There are five questions tonight and there will be three options. Uh, you choose the right one uh, and for each of the questions then afterwards you can submit your answers and see how you get on. Okay, whenever you're ready uh, we will begin. 
First question, what was the best thing about the Garden of Eden? A. Adam and Eve could play with all the animals. B. Everything was so beautiful and good. C. They had a close friendship with God himself. The second question, the second question, what was the name of the tree in the middle of the garden? What was the, tree, the name of the tree in the middle of the garden? A, was it the tree of different kind of fruits? B, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? C, the big brown tree in the garden. And our third question tonight. When Satan wanted to deceive Eve, which of these did he not do? A. He twisted what God had said. B. He told her she would become like God. C. He said it would taste nice. And the fourth question. What was the worst thing about Adam's disobedience? What was the worst thing about Adam's disobedience? A. Sin made Adam and Eve feel guilty. B. Sin passed on to every single one of us. And see, sin made Adam afraid. And the final question. What did God say would happen if Adam disobeyed his word? What did God say would happen if Adam disobeyed his word? A. A he would surely die. B. That his eyes would be opened. C. That he would have to run and hide. So those are the five questions. And if you think that you have got them all right, then you send in your uh, application uh, with all of your answers, uh, with your name and your address and details. So that when, if you've won a prize, we'll be able to contact you and send you uh, your prize. So do remember, boys and girls, don't forget to send in uh, your answers to the quiz. And again, we're going to have another quiz uh, tomorrow night. Thank you.